onto skeletal muscle fibers and organization. A couple things about skeletal muscle fibers. They are muscle fibers in general are, are especially skeletal and cardiac are unique in that they have this a protein called myoglobin. So globin means it's a globular protein and the myo, the prefix myo means muscle. It is very similar to the oxygen binding protein in red blood cells called hemoglobin. So muscle cells can actually hold on to a little bit of oxygen. So they're not completely dependent on um, the cardiovascular system at all times. They also, like the liver, can knit excess glucose into this animal storage carbohydrate called glycogen. And then when they start to run out of glucose, they can take the glycogen, break it down into glucose, um, and then throw that into cellular respiration. Two different, basically two different kinds of um, muscle fibers, slow twitch and fast twitch. So they differ in cross-sectional area. So we're looking at a cross-section through a muscle here. You can kind of see there's a muscle fiber, there's a muscle fiber. The dark spots are the nuclei around the edges. The <clears throat> slow twitch muscle, which is indicated by the little asterisks, they're smaller, they stain more darkly, and that's because they contain more myoglobin. Myoglobin, like hemoglobin, has iron in it, and that's what gives it the color. These cells specialize in aerobic respiration. All, all cells do, obviously, but um, these guys in particular are well suited for it because they've got all of the myoglobin that um, can be used to keep up with aerobic cellular respiration, even if our cardiovascular system can't supply to meet demand. Um, so that you see slow twitch muscle predominate in muscles that are used for, that are constantly used. So our back muscles, think about the difference between um, a chicken breast and a chicken leg, because that's the difference between slow twitch, which is chicken legs, and um, fast twitch, which is the chicken breast. Um, so those cells are larger, they stain more lightly because they have less myoglobin. They're really good for sudden bursts of power. So another way of, of conceptualizing this distinction is to think about human athletes, right? Endurance athletes, marathon runners, tend to be folks that just naturally have a lot of slow twitch muscle. People that are incredible sprinters tend to be people that naturally have a lot of fast twitch muscle. Fast twitch muscle fatigues easily, but you can generate a ferocious amount of force over a short period of time. So here we go with the structure of skeletal muscle again. So we have a single muscle fiber, right? It's each muscle fiber is contacted by an axon terminal, <clears throat> a set of axon terminals. And the single motor, motor neuron will contact, um, usually, often anyway, is gonna contact more than a single muscle fiber that motor neuron plus all of the muscle fibers that it innervates, that's what a motor unit is. And all the cells in a motor unit are gonna contract at the same time because you're gonna end up with synaptic transmission from these axon terminals at the same time. Another thing you can see in this image is that even within a single muscle fiber, you have what look like tubes inside. So we've got, if we start at the macroscopic end, we've got the bone, we've got tendon, the whole muscle, and then individual fascicles, 
right? And then one of them is pulled out here so that it's visible. And then the individual muscle fibers that are, are part of that bundle. So this is sort of similar to the illustration that's in the concept check. As I said before, the prefix myo means muscle, fasci means bundle or band. So a fascicle is a bundle of a bundle of muscle fibers, and what are ca what's called the fascia are um, deep fascia are connective tissue that that bundle tissue together. So we've got the epimyceum that wraps the entire muscle. We've got the paramyceum which marks off the fascicles, which we we got one pulled out here, and then the endomyceum, which is in between, which wraps each individual muscle fiber and fills in the spaces between them. If we look at a flat cross section, what we see, this so, so all the way on the right, that's my sort of silly cartoon drawing, and then over here, this doesn't come through when we have it in the, um, we import the PowerPoint, but you can see individual muscle fibers. And so we've got, come on, Sin, you can do it. In addition to the cell membrane, you've got the endomyceum. And then, actually, I should have done that in gray. And then we have the fascicle marked off with the paramyceum and then the epimyceum is this huge bundle. And again, we're looking at the, the muscle and cross section in, in both of these images. So now into the weeds. So a muscle fiber is a single cell, right? Um, and from here forward, we're just going to be talking about, well, we have been talking about skeletal muscle, but I just want to reiterate that. So muscle fiber is a single cell. Um, it's got all of the typical organelles and some of, in addition, that have been modified for muscle contraction. So to try to anchor this, if we are within a muscle fiber, I'm using blue at the top. Um, and then when we transition to looking within a myofibril, we'll switch to a different color. Little strange bits of vocabulary. Um, the prefix sarco means flesh and lemma means husk. So the plasma membrane in muscle fibers is called the sarcolemma. Um, and you definitely should know that. And the sarcolemma, the cell membrane, in addition to containing multiple nuclei, also contains thousands of these tubular units of protein called myofibrils. So you've got muscle fiber, myofibrils is the next layer down. The cytoplasm of muscle cells is, plasm is stuff. Um, so it's the flesh stuff, the sarcoplasm. And you can see in this little cartoon that the striations that are visible through the microscope are a reflection of the organization within the myofibrils. So you're sort of seeing it, this banding through the sarcolemma or the plasma membrane. So again, we've got the sarcolemma along the outside here. So let me get my little pointer, right? There's a nucleus just under the surface. You, in this image, the mitochondria are the sort of light, bright blue color. And you can see there are tons and tons of them. We've got the myofibrils. And each myofibril is wrapped with this uh, netting, it's drawn purple here. Um, it's called the sarcoplasmic reticulum. So remember, so reticulum, that should make you think of endoplasmic reticulum. 
rough and smooth. This is modified endoplasmic reticulum, the sarcoplasmic reticulum. And it has been specialized to store calcium ions. So this is the second place. The first was with the structure of, or sorry, with exocytosis of neurotransmitter. This is the second part of our uh, body's functioning that is privileged over bone density when it comes to calcium, because your muscles can't contract if there's no calcium ion in the sarcoplasm. Here, we're going to take a, deep, a deeper dive. Um, we've got a single muscle fiber with multiple nuclei, mitochondrion, one myofibril here. If we pull the myofibril out and enlarge it, you can see we've got the, the sarcoplasmic reticulum. This doesn't show up very well. Um, and it has these flattened endings that are referred to as terminal cisternae. So terminal means end, and a cistern is a storage thing. Like in the desert southwest, people have cisterns to store water. So, and cisternae is just the plural. So terminal cisternae flank another structure that is called the transverse or T-tubule network which I just did a little red there. So if we have the myofibril all the way in the right that doesn't have the sarcoplasmic reticulum netting around it and does, isn't showing you the T-tubule network. In this image, the T or transverse tubule is, is in fact, tubule just means tiny tube. It is in fact an extension of the plasma membrane into the cell. So any fluid that is, any extracellular fluid is actually going to be filling the T2 network. And that's an important thing to remember because that's how the action potential in the muscle fiber is gonna make its way deep into the cell. What we call a triad is Tri for three is a single transverse tubule and two terminal cisternae of the sarcoplasmic reticulum. And then in, all the way on the right, you can see sort of a vaguely 3D version. This is where I really miss being in lab with you guys because we have a nice three-dimensional model. It makes it a little easier to see. Okay. So... Again, within a muscle fiber, you have multiple nuclei. Don't worry about them. the bands. Multiple mitochondria, tons, tons. Um, the sarcolemma, which is actually here, got moved. Um, the sarcoplasm, which surrounds the myofibrils, which are those tubular units of contractile protein. One of the hardest things about skeletal muscle is that you have tubes that are wrapped in sarcolemma and then in endomycium, which are then wrapped with other muscle fibers into structures that look very tubular, which are then wrapped again to form the whole muscle so you have to sort of find something that you can recognize in a diagram so that you can really pin where what you're looking at so mitochondria are always my go-to when i for determining if i'm looking at a single cell because you don't have mitochondria outside of cells so i can tell that this has got to be, I'm looking at a muscle fiber, and this has got to be the either the sarcolemma or, yeah, this is the sarcolemma. We're not showing <clears throat> the endomycine here. I might be able to tell because of the multiple nuclei. If I'm looking at a picture like the one on the concept, the first one on the concept check, right, if you can make out a bone or a tendon, 
that's a way of anchoring yourself and you just work down in size. Okay, so myofibrils. Um, they are cylinder shaped bundles of contractile proteins that run the length of the cell. And they are made up of what we refer to as myofilaments, of course. <laughs> So filaments are, sm are, filaments are smaller than fibrils, which are smaller than fi fibers, 